Picture that a dinosaur that could weigh up to 11,684 and a half pounds, covered in intimidating bone plates, and armed with a spike tail that could puncture an, an Allosaurus skull. Yet for over a century, scientists have labeled the Stegosaurus as the dumbest dinosaur in history. How did a creature with such impressive defenses earn such a harsh reputation? The answer lies in a brain that paleontologist Kenneth Carpenter described as resembling a bent hot dog and weighing less than your smartphone. But recent discoveries about its sophisticated plates and precision tail weapon are forcing paleontologists to completely reconsider everything we thought we knew about this armored giant's intelligence. The story of how this reputation began takes us back to a single fossil discovery in the American West. The dusty Colorado hills of 1876 witnessed a discovery that would reshape our understanding of prehistoric life for generations. Fossil hunter M.P. Felch unearthed bones that belonged to a creature unlike anything scientists had seen before. When renowned paleontologist Othniel C. Marsh examined these fossils the following year, he found himself staring at an impossible puzzle. Massive triangular plates, four deadly tail spikes, and a skull that contained something that defied explanation. Inside that skull lay a brain cavity so remarkably small that it challenged every assumption about how large animals could function. Marsh measured the space and discovered it could hold a brain no bigger than a walnut. For a creature stretching 30 feet from nose to tail and weighing several tons, this seemed absurd. How could such a massive animal survive with so little brain power? The scientific community of the late 1800s already viewed reptiles as primitive compared to mammals. And this discovery appeared to confirm their worst suspicions about dinosaur intelligence. Marsh's interpretation followed the logical thinking of his era. A creature this enormous with such a tiny brain must represent the most basic form of prehistoric life. Early paleontologists began calculating the brain to body ratio, creating numbers that seemed to mathematically prove the animal's mental limitations. The comparison became a standard measurement that would haunt Stegosaurus for decades to come. Even the name Marsh chose reflected early misunderstandings. Stegosaurus means roofed lizard because scientists initially believed the distinctive plates lay flat across the back like overlapping roof tiles. As excavations continued throughout the Morrison Formation, each new skeleton seemed to support the image of a lumbering, dim-witted giant. The fossils revealed an animal that appeared to have survived through sheer size rather than intelligence. Marsh's measurements and conclusions became accepted scientific fact, transforming Stegosaurus into the poster child for prehistoric stupidity. This reputation proved remarkably persistent, influencing everything from academic papers to popular culture representations. The single measurement of that walnut-sized brain cavity in 1877 created a scientific narrative that would endure for over a century. Marsh's initial interpretations became gospel within paleontological circles, establishing a reputation that seemed unshakable. Yet, beneath this simple story lay complexities that early scientists couldn't have imagined. While paleontologists obsessed over that walnut-sized brain, they completely missed the real story hiding in plain sight. Those 17 triangular plates marching down the Stegosaurus's spine held secrets that would eventually shatter the dumb dinosaur myth. For decades, scientists treated these distinctive features as nothing more than crude armor plating, assuming they worked like medieval shields to block predator attacks. The breakthrough came when researchers finally examined the internal structure of these plates under powerful microscopes. What they discovered changed everything. Running through each plate was an intricate network of blood vessels, creating patterns that looked more like sophisticated biological highways than simple bone armor. These weren't passive defensive structures at all. They were active living systems that required constant blood flow and neural control to function properly. The plates contained osteoderms with lattice-like structures that suggested complex physiological processes happening beneath the surface. Temperature regulation emerged as the leading explanation for this vascular network. The blood vessels could rapidly heat or cool the plates by adjusting circulation, essentially turning you know, the Stegosaurus into a walking thermostat. This biological air conditioning system required precise neural coordination to monitor body temperature and adjust blood flow accordingly. 
Such sophisticated control mechanisms seemed impossible for a creature supposedly too stupid to find food without help. Scientists began recognizing that these plates served multiple functions simultaneously. Beyond temperature control, they likely played crucial roles in species recognition and mate attraction. The alternating two-row arrangement, rather than the originally imagined flat roof configuration, maximized their visual impact and effectiveness. Some researchers theorized that the plates could change color through blood flow variations, creating dynamic displays for communication purposes. Modern imaging technology revealed that the blood vessel networks were far more complex than early studies suggested. The circulatory systems within the plates rivaled those found in the most sophisticated biological structures. Advanced scans showed intricate branching patterns that indicated precise evolutionary design rather than random development. These discoveries fundamentally challenged the established narrative. How could a supposedly dim-witted animal evolve and operate such an elaborate system of biological machinery? The plates transformed from simple defensive tools into evidence of remarkable physiological sophistication, forcing scientists to reconsider whether any creature capable of controlling such complex systems deserved the dumbest dinosaur label. At the end of the Stegosaurus's flexible tail lay four deadly spikes that paleontologists would eventually nickname Thagomizers after a far side cartoon. These weren't decorative features or backup armor. They were precision weapons that could reach one and a half feet in length and deliver devastating blows to any predator foolish enough to attack from behind. The fossil evidence tells a story of regular combat that challenges everything we thought we knew about dinosaur intelligence. Damaged spike tips appear on approximately 10% of discovered Stegosaurus fossils, proving these weapons saw real action during the late Jurassic period. Even more compelling paleontologists have discovered Allosaurus fossils bearing puncture wounds that perfectly match Thagomizer spikes. These aren't random scrapes or bite marks, they're precise punctures that could only result from successful defensive strikes by a Stegosaurus under attack. The predator and prey were locked in deadly encounters that required split second timing and remarkable accuracy. The flexible tail structure that supported these spikes allowed for rapid sweeping motions that could generate tremendous force, but controlling such movements demanded complex neural coordination that seemed impossible for a supposedly dim-witted animal. Modern biomechanical studies revealed that effective Thagomizer deployment required the Stegosaurus to judge distance timing and force with remarkable precision. The animal had to track a moving predator, calculate the optimal moment to strike and execute a sweeping tail motion with enough accuracy to connect with a vital target. The positioning and angle of these spikes were perfectly designed to maximize damage while protecting the dinosaur's vulnerable rear quarters from attack. This wasn't random evolution or lucky accident. The Thagomizer represented sophisticated biological engineering that required constant practice and refinement to remain effective against intelligent predators like Allosaurus creatures that paleontologists consider among the smartest dinosaurs of their era. The fact that these weapons evolved and persisted for millions of years suggests they were highly effective defensive tools. Such success would be impossible without adequate neural control systems and tactical awareness. Fossil damage patterns and biomechanical analysis prove the Thagomizer required precise neural control that directly contradicted the image of a slow, stupid animal incapable of strategic thinking. When scientists finally examined how Stegosaurus actually fed, they uncovered a story that completely contradicted the dumb dinosaur narrative. Modern bite force studies conducted in the 2000s revealed something shocking. Stegosaurus possessed one of the weakest bites in the entire dinosaur kingdom. In fact, their bite force was weaker than a human's barely capable of breaking down twigs and branches less than half an inch in diameter. For a creature weighing several tons, living in a world dominated by tough, fibrous plants and fierce competition from other herbivores, this seemed like a death sentence. The mystery deepened when researchers examined the dinosaur's jaw structure and teeth Unlike powerful plant eaters such as Triceratops with their grinding batteries of teeth, Stegosaurus possessed rounded peg-like teeth that could only move up and down. This limited jaw motion seemed primitive and ineffective compared to the sophisticated chewing mechanisms other herbivorous dinosaurs had evolved. How could such an apparently inadequate feeding system sustain a massive animal for millions of years? 
The answer revealed remarkable biological sophistication hidden beneath apparent simplicity. Stegosaurus had evolved a highly selective feeding strategy that focused exclusively on the most nutritious parts of available vegetation. Rather than attempting to process tough plant material like other dinosaurs, it carefully chose soft ferns, fruits, and tender young shoots that required minimal processing. This selective approach maximized nutritional intake while minimizing energy expenditure, creating an extremely efficient feeding system. The dinosaur's specialized cheek pouches allowed it to store and process food more effectively than many other herbivorous dinosaurs. Its unique head down posture and proportionally short front legs positioned it perfectly to access low growing nutrient rich plants that taller dinosaurs couldn't reach efficiently. This feeding strategy required constant environmental awareness and the ability to distinguish between different plant types based on nutritional value and digestibility. Professor Paul Barrett's research team discovered that despite the weak bite force, Stegosaurus jaws worked very efficiently with bite strength similar to that of a living cow or sheep. As Barrett noted, sheep and cows are good at grinding up and the chopping plants and it looks like Sophie was also very good at doing the same. Rather than representing stupidity, the apparently weak feeding system demonstrated sophisticated specialization that allowed Stegosaurus to thrive in a, in a competitive ecosystem through intelligent resource selection. The 1970s brought a scientific revolution that would forever change how paleontologists viewed dinosaur intelligence. Scientists developed the encephalization quotient system, a new method that measured brain size um, relative to body mass, rather than simply looking at absolute brain size. This approach offered a more sophisticated way to assess cognitive abilities across different species and time periods. Initially, the EQ system seemed to confirm what everyone already believed uh, about Stegosaurus. The numbers still looked terrible, reinforcing the reputation for stupidity that had persisted since Marsh's original discovery. However, everything changed when scientists realized they had been using the wrong comparison group entirely. For over a century, paleontologists had been comparing dinosaur brains to modern reptiles like lizards and crocodiles. This seemed logical since dinosaurs were classified as reptiles, but the evolutionary relationships were far more complex than anyone understood. The discovery that dinosaurs were closely related to birds forced a complete re-evaluation of prehistoric cognition and intelligence measurements. Modern CT scanning technology revolutionized the field by allowing scientists to peer inside fossilized skulls without damaging precious specimens. These advanced imaging techniques revealed that many dinosaur brains were larger and more complex than early estimates suggested calling into question decades of established assumptions. The three-dimensional models created through computed tomography provided far more accurate representations than the crude endocasts that previous generations of paleontologists had relied upon for their conclusions. When researchers began comparing dinosaur brain structures to birds rather than reptiles, they discovered remarkable similarities that painted a dramatically different picture of prehistoric intelligence. Some paleontologists started arguing that certain theropod dinosaurs possess neuron densities comparable to modern primates, suggesting cognitive abilities that seemed impossible just decades earlier. Research on contemporary birds revealed that species like crows and parrots display remarkable problem-solving abilities, tool use, and complex social behaviors despite having relatively small brains. These discoveries proved that brain size alone was a poor predictor of cognitive ability, especially when comparing across different evolutionary lineages. The realization that bird-like cognitive abilities might have been present in dinosaurs forced scientists to reconsider what actually constituted intelligence in prehistoric animals. This paradigm shift opened new possibilities for understanding Stegosaurus, not as a dim-witted reptile, but as a creature with potentially sophisticated cognitive abilities perfectly adapted to its ecological niche. Today, the evidence tells a completely different story about Stegosaurus intelligence. The sophisticated thermoregulation systems running through those iconic plates require precise neural control to monitor body temperature and adjust blood flow. The deadly accuracy needed for effective thagomizer combat demanded complex coordination between sensory input and muscular response. The specialized feeding strategy that focused on nutrient-rich, low-fiber vegetation represented intelligent resource selection rather than primitive limitations. The journey from Marsh's 1877 discovery to modern neuroscience reveals how scientific paradigms evolve. 
Just as the original type specimen was replaced and the second brain theory abandoned, our understanding of dinosaur intelligence continues advancing. The Stegosaurus story teaches us to reconsider bias in prehistoric science and question what seems obvious to one generation but proves completely wrong to the next.